scientists say that one of the traits marking the evolutionary success of an animal is its lack of specialization at mealtimes, since this means it won't depend on just one source of food for sustenance. If so, man is certainly one of the most evolved animals on the face of the earth. We eat everything. We're omnivorous and crave everything. The problem, though, is that to enjoy certain treats, we need some utensils, some of which are quite sophisticated and associated with a highly advanced culture. We'll be discovering that animals have been using these tools much before we ever invented good table manners. Despite the advantages of feeding on everything, those who specialize in a particular type of food also have some things in their favor. Eating hard objects, for example, since this means you won't have much competition. To be able to do this, however, you need very specific tools. Every type of diet requires its own particular type of cutlery. To understand what we're talking about, you only have to observe birds' beaks. The pelican's bill is one of the most amazing beaks in comparison to other species. The pelican uses the stretchable pouch hanging from the underside of its bill as a sort of shopping bag. It enables it to catch many morsels every time it goes fishing. Pelicans spend a lot of time in the air looking for their prey. From their bird's eye view, they can find those schools of fish where they can use their ingenious beaks to their best advantage. Because of their huge weight, a lot of effort is spent in taking off from the water. Thanks to wholesale fishing, they don't have to dive as often. The pelican's large spoon certainly enables it to save a lot of time and energy. It's not necessary to have a very developed brain to invent a soup ladle. Nevertheless, its simplicity does not diminish its usefulness. Although fish soup can be quite delicious and nutritious, some wouldn't think twice when given the choice of red meat. Nothing could be messier at lunchtime than eating a steak with a blunt knife. Carnivores have something in common. A good set of sharp steak knives to enable them to gorge without any cutting problems. In the animal world, the small mustelids certainly use their knife-like fangs to the best advantage. Although their size prevents them from competing with large carnivores, they don't hesitate in attacking large and dangerous prey. The polecat's excellent sense of smell has led it to a burrow occupied by an old rat. The rodent is caught unaware resting in his den and is not able to escape. Both animals unsheathe their knives in a quick fight where the speed of each bite is going to make all the difference. The mustelid has succeeded in sinking its fangs between the rodent's vertebra and has broken its spine. The fight is over. Now the polecat can eat its meat. Thanks to its incisive canine and molar teeth, each bite is easily processed. Nothing beats a good set of cutlery.
The solifuge does not eat dirt. It's simply digging with its large mandibles. By dusk, before the sun is set, it will have finished digging a hole where it will hide until it gets dark. The ground can offer little resistance to its serrated pincers. Although this is not their main function. Now that it's dark, it's time to hunt. Although its gait may seem unsteady, it's just being guided by its sensitive chemical and tactile detectors. With its first set of legs up in the air, it smells its surroundings and feels a presence nearby. The search has been successful. Its chelicerae are now performing the task for which they were designed, to crush and grind the body of its prey to a pulp so that the solifuge can readily digest it. Although insects are covered by a hard layer of chitin, similar to the shells of crustaceans that protects them from many attacks, solifugae have succeeded in developing instruments that can easily destroy these defenses. Enjoying delicacies often requires a lot of work. The strange solifuge's pincers enables it to do this quite easily. For a large feast, nothing can be better than gulping it down with good wine. This is not just a question of gastronomic pleasure. Drinking good wine in moderation can be very beneficial. If we observe snakes, we can see that there's nothing better for preventing indigestion than to drink something that helps the stomach in digesting a meal. Although most aphidians cannot be considered truly poisonous, many have glands in their mouths that store digestive toxins. However, they do not use these poisons to hunt. They don't need them. The opisticlyph snakes kill their prey by squeezing them. But first, they bite their victim for a long time. The poisonous glands are connected to their fangs, and the poison trickles into the wound, reducing the prey's agony and saving the snake some work. As the poison enters the body, it starts to decompose the prey's organs. During the slow and difficult swallowing process, increasing amounts of enzymes leak into the prey's body to make digestion a process as light as possible.
Something as easy as drinking becomes a complicated exercise for some animals. Nevertheless, water is essential. The size of the giraffe's long neck is an advantage when it feeds on the leaves from the highest branches of the acacia trees. Nevertheless, this becomes a great handicap when they try to soothe their parched and interminably long throats. Having such a long neck forces them to make great efforts in sucking and pumping water to their stomachs, which moreover are a couple of meters higher than their mouths. This is why they're constantly raising their heads. It's quite difficult for giraffes to reach the water and their necks function like a huge straw. Although this is a well-conceived concept, it wasn't the giraffe's idea. The idea comes from the insect world. Butterflies created one of the most refined feeding methods, the straw. Perhaps they got bored chewing soft leaves when they were at their larval stage and decided to feed only through their hollow and fine proboscis. Nevertheless, this means that they have to take all the nutrients that their bodies need in liquid form. This is why you will often find large groups of butterflies near puddles and riverbanks trying to absorb the mineral salts dissolved in water. The show of color and movement generated over those wet areas attracts more and more butterflies. And soon you have a beauty pageant unrivaled in nature. Many of these are short-lived puddles and it's impossible to know when there will be another open bar again serving these essential mineral salts. Lepidoptera mostly feed on sugars from flower nectar. The tongue of this butterfly is brushing around the bottom of each flower to reach the sweet delicacy. Eating at this restaurant is like playing the lottery. Other hungry insects may have stopped by previously and the flowers could be dry. However, the butterfly's long sucking straw finds food in places that other insects were unable to reach. When you have to suck in, there are many ways of achieving this. For example, this is a sucking turtle. The strange mata-mata is carnivorous like most other turtles but it doesn't have jaws, or a beak, or teeth. Its mouth is like a mailbox, even if it doesn't look like one. And that's precisely the trick. This Amazon turtle is an undercover expert. Nobody knows exactly where its head is, or if those fleshy mounds on its body are algae or branches. When necessary, it knows how to keep still and pretend to be part of the vegetation on the riverbed. In one of its raids, the Mata Mata turtle has found an unwary school of cardinal tetrafish. Its strange appearance is a perfect camouflage and its slow movements take it closer and closer to the unwary fish. Once the turtle crosses the enemy's line, there's no mercy. The turtle is a vacuum cleaner, and there are the crumbs. When the turtle is close enough to the fish, it just opens its mouth and generates an inflow. Its sucking power is so strong that fish cannot escape the current. Everything happens so fast that the group is caught unaware.
The turtle sucks in a lot of water along with the fish. But before swallowing its victims, it lets the water out by just barely separating its lips. The Mata Mata turtle's amazing aspirating system is unbeatable, especially for eating raw fish. Sushi. Although experts assert that nothing beats chopsticks if you want to eat real sushi, newcomers may find it difficult to make the right movement to bring the desired morsel to their mouths. Our gourmet would do well to look underwater and take a lesson from the professionals. Shrimps and crabs are born with chopsticks attached to their hands. They have an innate ability enabling them to grab the tiniest morsels with their pincers. The underwater world is full of specialists. This crab has changed two of its pincers and has turned them into skimmers that filter whatever the generous ocean provides. It feeds on the plankton found in the rich ocean currents. It can catch the smallest piece of food in its net just by being at the right place and straining the water to obtain its food. When the crab feels something touching its screen, it draws its net inwards towards its mouth. Its movements are so mechanical that it often resembles a weird toy. But the flapping required to reach its food makes it vulnerable to the dangers lurking in the reef. That's why this strange crab usually lives in the poisonous and stinging tentacles of certain anemones. They weren't just swept by the current and happily coincided in this privileged location. Instead, the crustacean, acting in its own interest, placed itself atop the anemone to seek protection from other predators. Because of its shell, which protects it from the stinging tentacles, the crab is free to eat at its leisure. Many species feed by straining water or sand. They're called filtering animals. The flow of the ocean feeds these strange animals. All they have to do is filter the essence from the water to obtain their daily helpings. For these animals, the strainer is an extremely practical invention. For us, it's a refined idea for the genteel habit of ending an excellent meal with a good cup of coffee. Skim the milk, please. We've noticed with some astonishment that we share dietary habits and utensils with other animals. When it comes to table manners, many things had been patented in the animal world. Unfortunately, to satisfy hunger and our quest for luxury, the most pompous culture in the world, our culture, has altered our environment so much that we are seriously endangering it. Humankind's greatest historic revolution occurred when we evolved from a community of collectors to a cattle raising and farming civilization. Widespread agriculture has had the most serious impact on the environment and is greatly responsible for destroying natural spaces. Someone once said that if an alien were to describe our planet, it would say that it was dominated by a few grains and other grasses that maintain another species Homo sapiens, enslaved in toiling and caring for them. Although this may seem like an exaggeration, the truth is that for thousands of years, humans have depended on wheat, rice, soy, or rye harvests. The invention of agriculture has had a lasting impact on our planet and means of subsistence. We may take some comfort, however, in knowing that we're not the only ones tied to the land or the first farmers. Perhaps we could learn something from those who really invented farming. We're in Costa Rica's tropical rainforest, 
the warm habitat of the leaf-cutting ants, the sompopas. These ants work exclusively for a fungus that they keep as a guest in their colony. They continuously carry pieces of leaves to the nest to keep their guest constantly well-fed. Not just any tree will do, however, since not all species can synthesize the nutrients that the fungus needs for growth. The ants even have to select the hour for collecting these leaves so they can find those with a lower concentration of toxic substances. These ants work different shifts, day and night. However, all this loving care is easy to understand once you realize that the stomach of these ants is the final resting place for the fungus. Fungus farming is not an easy task. Fungi do not take well to changes in temperature or CO2 concentration. Since so much warm compost in the nest could kill the fungus, in the summer, the sompopa ants are much more active at night, the time when the leaves are fresher, and contain more nutrients. As if these precautions weren't enough, these tireless ants have designed a complex tunnel-based aeration system so that they can obtain a better crop. Air seeps in through the sides and flows through the nest until going out through a central shaft. Thus fresh air flows through the entire interior of the nest. In the cold months, when the temperature drops, the ants are able to regulate the airflow by stopping some of the entry ducts. This ventilation system keeps the fungi alive and therefore the ants as well. The leaf-cutting ant is not the first and only farming species. From their cousins the termites to the Celentaria, the most primitive animals in the world, fungi or microalgae farming have converted solar energy into food. Unfortunately, we haven't been able to copy such a sustainable method. It could be that this system is reserved for higher species, such as jellyfish or ants, or that perhaps man is not easily satisfied and always wants more. This is our unfinished business. Despite having natural teachers to show us how to take advantage of available resources, our ambition has no limits.